Oblivion's Ark, a colossal spaceship, drifted silently through the vast, cold cosmos. Within its steel belly, Commander Ryland awoke with a start in a hypersleep chamber. His heart pounded in his chest as he gasped for air, his mind a blank slate. Beside him, another chamber hissed open. Engineer Jackson stumbled out, equally disoriented. Where, where are we? He croaked, his voice echoing in the hollow silence. I don't know, Ryland replied, his voice rough from disuse. They were alone, surrounded by a maze of cold steel and blinking lights. As they ventured deeper into the ship, they encountered the unthinkable, the Moros. These terrifying creatures, humanoid but grotesquely deformed, lurked in the shadows, their eyes glowing in the darkness. The sight of them sent icy tendrils of fear coiling around Ryland and Jackson's hearts. Elsewhere on the ship, Dr. Ilara, a biologist, had been awake for an unknown period. She had been studying the Moros, trying to find a way to control or eliminate them. Her once pristine lab was now a chaotic mess of notes, diagrams, and biological samples. The paths of Ryland, Jackson, and Alara eventually crossed. The men were wary, but Alara's knowledge of the ship and the Moros was invaluable. Together, they began to piece together their fragmented memories and unravel the horrifying truth of their mission. The Oblivion's Ark was humanity's last hope, a vessel carrying the remnants of mankind to a new home, but something had gone horribly wrong. The Moros were the result of a genetic experiment gone awry, a desperate attempt to adapt human physiology for the journey. The ship was now a floating tomb, a prison for the monstrosities it had inadvertently created, and the three of them were trapped within it, their survival hanging by a thread as the Moros closed in. The struggle for survival became a daily ordeal. Each encounter with the Moros was a dance with death, a desperate fight for another day of existence. But with each passing day, they grew stronger, more resourceful. They were not just survivors, they were fighters. As they fought, they also sought answers. They delved into the ship's databanks, piecing together the fragments of their mission, their past, and the origin of the Moros. The truth was as horrifying as it was tragic. The Moros were not mindless beasts, but victims of a desperate gamble for survival. The climax of their struggle came when they discovered the ship's destination, a habitable planet, their new Eden. But to reach it, they would need to navigate through a Moros-infested section of the ship to manually override the ship's navigation system. The task was almost suicidal, but it was their only hope. The three of them steeled themselves for the task ahead. They were not just fighting for their own survival, but for the future of humanity. They were the last line of defense against the Moros, the last hope for the human race. The battle for control of the ship was brutal. The Moros fought with primal ferocity, but Ryland, Jackson, and Ilara fought with the desperation of the cornered, the determination of the doomed. They fought not just with weapons, but with their wits, using their knowledge of the ship and the Moros to their advantage. And as they fought, they discovered something unexpected. The Moros were changing, evolving. Some of them showed signs of higher intelligence, of awareness. It was a chilling development, but also a potential opportunity. If they could communicate with these evolved Moros, perhaps they could negotiate a truce. With this new hope, they pressed on fighting their way towards the navigation control room. The Moros were relentless, but so were they. They would not go down without a fight. They would not let humanity's last hope die. As they neared the control room, they were ambushed by a group of Moros. Ryland and Jackson held them off, while Alara worked on the navigation controls. It was a desperate last stand, a final push for survival. Finally, Ilara managed to override the navigation controls. The ship was back on course, but their victory was short-lived. The Moros overwhelmed Ryland and Jackson, dragging them into the darkness. With a heavy heart, Ilara sealed the control room, leaving her companions behind. She was alone again, but she was not defeated. She had a mission to complete, a promise to keep. She would ensure the survival of the human race, no matter the cost. With the ship back on course, Ilara turned her attention to the Moros. 
she would find a way to communicate with them, to coexist with them. It was a daunting task, but she was not afraid. She was a survivor. She was a fighter. Ilara was left alone, the weight of humanity's survival resting heavily on her shoulders. She grieved for Ryland and Jackson, brave men who had fought alongside her, but there was no time for mourning. She had a mission to accomplish, a promise to keep. She turned her attention back to the Moros. Her previous attempts to communicate with them had been futile, but she was not one to give up. She spent countless hours studying them, observing their behavior, looking for a breakthrough. In her solitude, she began to notice subtle changes in the Moros. They were evolving, becoming more intelligent, more aware. It was a chilling realization, but it also presented an opportunity. If she could establish a line of communication with these evolved Moros, perhaps they could coexist. She began to experiment with different methods of communication. She tried using sounds, symbols, even physical gestures. Each attempt was met with failure, but she persevered. She was determined to find a way to reach them. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to Alara, Ryland and Jackson were not dead. They had been captured by the Moros, dragged into the depths of the ship. They were kept in a dark, dank cell, their only company the distant growls of the Moros. Despite their grim situation, they refused to give up. They plotted their escape, using their knowledge of the ship's layout and the Moros' behavior patterns. They knew it was a long shot, but they were fighters. They would not go down without a fight. Back in her lab, Ilara finally had a breakthrough. She discovered that the Moros responded to a specific frequency of sound. It was a primitive form of communication, but it was a start. She began to experiment with this new form of communication, hoping to establish a dialogue with the Moros. While Alara was making progress with the Moros, Ryland and Jackson made their escape. They fought their way out of the cell, using their wits and sheer determination to overcome the Moros. They were free, but they were far from safe. The ship was still infested with Moros, and they had to find a way back to Alara. Their journey back was fraught with danger. They encountered numerous Moros along the way, each encounter a deadly dance with death. But they pressed on, driven by the hope of reuniting with Alara and completing their mission. Meanwhile, Alara was making significant progress with the Moros. She had established a rudimentary form of communication with them, using the specific frequency of sound. It was far from perfect, but it was a start. With this new line of communication, she began to negotiate with the Moros. She explained their situation, their mission, and their desire to coexist. The Moros were wary, but they seemed to understand. They agreed to a truce, a tentative step towards coexistence. Just as Alara was making headway with the Moros, Ryland and Jackson arrived. Their reunion was emotional, a moment of joy in the midst of their grim situation. They shared their experiences, their discoveries, and their hopes for the future. With their team reunited, they renewed their efforts to complete their mission. They worked with the Moros, using their newfound communication to navigate the ship and ensure its course towards the habitable planet. Their journey was far from over, but they were not alone. They had each other, and they had the Moros. They were survivors, fighters, the last hope of humanity, and they would not give up. They faced numerous challenges along the way, each one a test of their resolve, but they overcame them growing stronger with each victory. They learned to work with the Moros, to coexist with them. They were no longer enemies but allies. As the Oblivion's Ark neared its destination, they prepared for their new life. They knew it would not be easy, but they were ready. They had survived the horrors of the ship, the terror of the Moros, and the loneliness of space. They were ready to face whatever challenges awaited them on the new planet. And so, the Oblivion's Ark continued its journey, carrying the last hope of humanity towards a new beginning. The age of humans had ended, but their legacy lived on, in the heart of three determined individuals, in the DNA of the Moros, and in the endless expanse of the cosmos.